Hi right, everyone, welcome back, Hold of the Blade Reviews. Today, we have the TFW Claymore Sword. You can see, this thing is gigantic. It's a two-handed sword. It's really, really cool. We take it out of the scabbard. This thing probably isn't even in the frame right now. So, we're gonna take a look at some specs on this blade, do some up-close looks at it in and out of the scabbard, and then we're gonna hit some cut testing at the Tommies and see how that goes. Let's get to it. All right, overall length of this blade. Give me a minute while I get this out of the scabbard. 56 and three quarter inches overall length. It's the gigantic sword. 42 inch blade. So we have a leather piece right here wrapping. This is not sharp underneath the blade, of course, for when you need to choke up on it a little bit or even play this like you would for a spear. But the blade itself, the cutting edge itself, is about 42 inches all together, all the way from the tip. This thing is very sharp. I'm going to say that again. This thing is very sharp. And Mark, for whatever reason, put a little bit more of a touch up on the edge in case he didn't think I was going to be able to cut through tatami mats with this giant sword. So, uh, really, really cool blade. We obviously have a huge double-handed grip you can choke up on. You can choke all the way up onto the false part of the blade, right on the leather wrapped handle, uh, leather wrapped blade rather, and the leather wrapped handle. It kind of tapers down a little bit. So you'll see, if we get up kind of close to it, we'll see how it goes a little bit skinnier toward the pinky side, toward the pommel, so the heel of the hand can like, go into it. This one has a good amount of flexibility to it. So if I was to kind of like, I know it looks kind of weird, but like if I was to hit the handle, you'll see the blade kind of shakes a little bit. With a blade of this length, it has to have solid flexibility to it, otherwise it risks snapping. Now that's of course relative to what this blade can do with soft targets. Don't go cutting a tree down with it and be like, my blade broke, because it's not in the warranty. I promise you it's not in the warranty. So it look good amount of flexibility to it, so if you do touch the handle, the blade will move a little bit. There's nothing shaky on it for this one, um, or any of them really. So this blade's pretty sweet. Uh, we're looking at uh, D2 high carbon steel. It's a blade steel that TFW uses for all their blades. It's a high corrosion resistant blade. It's easy to sharpen an edge on it and it stays sharp, which is the entire intention why they use that steel. Yeah, if you drop this, don't drop it on your foot. It's really, really sharp. So just uh, taking a look at it right out, of the, right out of the actual scabbard. We go back to the scabbard here. I'm gonna slide this back in. Make sure don't don't miss the scabbard. Slide that back in. You'll see that it actually slides in really smooth. Whoop! The leather got stuck. Slides in really smooth and it forms right to it. Do not hold this upside down. Of course, um, we've got two pieces right here where you can wear this if you did want to carry this. Um, there isn't really any retention on it at all. It's just wood with a little piece of leather around it. Uh, that's also helping that if the scabbard was to split with the with the wood, this is like just nice decoration as well for it. These do move, so they're not glued down like some other companies will do. So the quality is really nice of the wood. We have a hardwood scabbard with a leather tip as well. So the stitching goes all the way around it, all the way down to the tip as well. And if you see cosmetic stuff going on with this, like cracks and, and like little nicks on it, that's because it's a blemish. That's why we're using it for the video. And then we have the pommel, which is of course peened. I would not want to have a threaded pommel for these. And then the cool thing about the little indentations here is that if you are holding this toward the pommel, if you're holding this toward the pommel, you can actually get a nice bite into the handle of that. This thing is gigantic. The sweeping cuts are huge as you come through with it. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this as far as that goes with the slashing and also with the thrusting. All right, looking at grip length here, the grip length is 10 and a half inches and the pommel is threaded. So if you do not have a peen pommel on this one, it is threaded. So make sure that it's threaded nice and tight. And you can always adjust that depending on if you're in like, depending on the wood handle and everything. If you need to tighten that down, just make sure you check that. Anytime that you are handling this blade, or really any blade, make sure that you check it for the safety features of it. 
So we have that leather, leather grip, the extended grip, like I said before. That could be if you're using this in a line, if you're using this to take shorter cuts with as well, or if you're taking these bigger sweeping cuts in order to clear a lot of space as you come through on this blade. Not something you really use indoors, so if I had to say that, but it's definitely a outdoor blade, like a field blade. But from here, I wanna go ahead and take a look at some up close looks of the blade in the scabbard and out of the scabbard, and then we'll do some cut testing on the tatamis. Let's get to it. All right, so then we put it up in the scabbard as well. We'll see the profile of it. I know it's dark. We'll see the profile of how tall this blade is. This is up against a telephone pole. It's pretty huge. And then we get the actual coloring of it. So you've got the leather, leather pieces you can wrap around it as well in order to carry this. I wouldn't really carry this on my back. I would want to have like a custom scabbard made for something like that to make sure it's really great retention on it because this blade is gigantic. All right, we can even see the height of this blade. So we'll see that it's literally, I just set it up on the actual tatami mat. It's kind of dark for this one, but you can see kind of the outline of it. If we take it into the light here, see the giant handguard, got the threaded pommel. Boom, I'm gonna lay this down in the grass. Try and give you as many different views of it as I can. There we go. So we'll see the leather is really, really well put together around it. There's no bubbles or anything on it. Super giant blade. If you were to lay the tatami mat next to it, that's how big the blade is. It's pretty wild. It's like almost, it's longer, longer than a tatami mat. The, 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 the blade alone. And the handle is really nice and secure as well. It's a giant grip. Wood handle with a leather wrap grip. All right, so now we're gonna look at the cut testing with this Claymore from TFW. Let's get to it. Man, that wasn't even that wasn't even the, the soaked part, that was dry. 